Hi, my name is Dawn Dickinson and today I'm going to talk to you about the six best towns in Northern Arizona for you to buy a country cabin, cabin in the pines where you can get away from the heat and just enjoy yourself on vacation, on the weekends, during ski season, uh, whenever you want. So today I'm gonna start with Flagstaff. And the reason I say Flagstaff is not because it's a city with 75,000 people or because it's got 7,900 foot elevation, so you're nice in the cool weather, or because it's the home of my alma mater, Northern Arizona University. I am talking about the outskirts of Flagstaff. So say you go east on Lake Mary Road towards Lake Mary, even if you catch that dirt road right before you get to Lake Mary, there are plenty of cute little cabins in that area. Also, if you go west towards a Snowball Ski Resort, right before you get to the turnoff of the ski resort, there are a lot of quaint little um, cabins that you would really love if you would take a visit to them. There's also, um, what is there, Kachina Village, there's Mountain Air, and of course Forest Highlands is a beautiful place to uh, buy a second home. Um, my fifth favorite place to buy a cabin in Arizona is Stoneman Lake. Now, I probably would have ranked Stoneman Lake a little higher, but it's very small. There's never more than a couple of properties for sale in there because there's only maybe 120, 130 parcels, and at least, well, at most, only half of those parcels have cabins on it. Probably less. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably less. So, um, Stoneman Lake still is in the mountainous area, so you have plenty of pine trees. It's one of the few natural lakes in Arizona, so you kind of go down into a, a crater, and there's a little area called uh, Ponderosa Pines where all the cabins are. Now, the cabins are all off-grid. Of course, they have septic tank, but there is water. Stoneman Lake Water Company uh, has a spring water that it taps on the top of the mountain and it provides water to all the cabins in there. The other thing is that it's off grid. There's no power. APS does not go there. I doubt APS ever will go there. So the cabins in there are all with solar panels and the panels charge the batteries. And then there is a backup generator for times when the, um, you know, it's cloudy for a few days or, or whatever reason you need uh, energy. Now, there's no camping in Stoneman Lake, but if you go on the hill, cross Stoneman Lake Road, very close, there are plenty of places to camp. There are, um, you know, wildlife runs through there, bird watching, hiking. Um, it's a really nice little secluded area if you're into, you know, having, you know, privacy and a place to yourself. Um, my number four recommendation is Happy Jack. Now, those of you who are my age remember the Who song, Happy Jack, and it is funny that there is a town called Happy Jack. Uh, the reason I like Happy Jack is because there's a lot of property there and many of the homes are on one acre parcel, so you get a little bit of space between each other. Now, it's about 50 miles southeast of Flagstaff. Um, there is a Happy Jack Lodge where they have a restaurant there, and then there's the Clintswell Little Cafe. Now, a lot of the homes, the average price is about $295,000. It's in the woods. It's actually higher elevation than Flagstaff, 7,400, so you get snow in the wintertime. Um, and there's ATV riding, hiking. There's a lot of hunting nearby, so uh, Happy Jack, again, a very good place to buy a cabin, and I've sold plenty of cabins in that area. Uh, number three is Heber Overgard. Okay, so Heber Overgard is actually way further east than I usually service, but it seems like I sell a cabin in that area every year. Uh, what's interesting about Heber Overgard is it's about halfway between Payson and uh, Sholo. So it's towards the White Mountains, uh, part of uh, Apache Sitgraves National Forest, and there's the Apache Sitgraves Observatory that's open to the public. Uh, there's a lot of retirement in there, tourism, little shops, restaurants, and again, pines, uh, high elevation uh, where you can get snow. But to me, the fun part of Heber Overgard is the folklore. So in 1975, there were a group of six loggers out logging near Heber, and supposedly the story they tell is there was a big light in the sky, Travis Walton, 
was one of the guys went running to see what was going on and he got zapped by a flying saucer and disappeared. The group went to tell the sheriff. The sheriff is looking at them like they're a bunch of crazies. And a few days later, the sheriff is about to arrest them for murdering their friend and dumping him in the woods. At this point, the story is getting national recognition or people from Phoenix, people from all over the world, uh, ascending on Heber Overgard, trying to figure out what's going on. And then suddenly, right before the group gets arrested, Travis Walton just shows up at a gas station in Heaver. He's naked, he's disheveled, he's thirsty as hell, five-day beer growth, and he tells this amazing tale from what he could remember about aliens and abductions. So, um, at that point, they couldn't arrest the guys, but it was always a mystery what really happened out there, and regardless of whether you like or are interested or believe the UFO stories, it's still just fun that you live in a place with such amazing folklore. And you drive down where the little shops have got carvings of bears and carvings of aliens. And uh, it's just, it's just kind of fun. Okay, so number two on my list of best Northern Arizona towns to buy a cabin is Munns Park. And there are several reasons for this. One is it's conveniently located about 18 miles or so south of Flagstaff, right off the 17. So when it snows in the wintertime, the I-17 is the very first place they plow after a snowstorm. So it's easy for you to get on the highway and either go north to Flagstaff or south to Phoenix. Another thing is there are 22 acres of forest area uh, 20 not 22 acres 22 square miles of forest area in Munns Park uh, so there's a lot of um, pine trees and many things to do there is the Pinewood Country Club and golf course so there's a beautiful golf course there if you're into uh, playing golf um, so some people complain about the prices in Munns Park being too high but that's not really true there are a lot of expensive nice homes in Munns Park but there's a variety of homes there are some at the lower end and I have seen townhomes right by the golf course. I've seen very many expensive homes and cabins and then there's a small area of mobile homes where you have a manufactured home on your own land so you can get into a a, a weekend cabin for about hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars which is really amazing you think about it for a second home in the woods now a uh, disadvantage of course to the manufactured homes is that they are kind of close to your neighbor you're a lot small and when you go to the country sometimes you want to be a little more isolated but that's okay it's not that bad and the other thing is any manufactured home built before 1976 it's more difficult for you to get a loan however I have worked with lenders that will loan on them so if you're interested, just um, write in the comment, hey, I'd like lender information on manufactured homes built, you know, at any time. So Munns Park is at uh, 65, 6,600 foot elevation. Uh, elevation. So you have all the things that you like to do in the pines. You go hiking, ATV riding, playing golf. Um, the Arizona Trail connects to um, the other side to Mormon Lake. Um, right over the hill is Mormon Lake. You can get to Flagstaff quickly. Um, you can go bird watching, deer watching, animal watching. There are just a lot of things to do, a lot of available properties, and very, very good location. So that leads me to my very last pick, which is my favorite place in Arizona to buy your uh, country cabin in the pines, and that is Mormon Lake. Now, some of you who know me might say Mormon Lake. Of course you say that. You have a cabin in Mormon Lake, and that is true. So I do have my own cabin in Mormon Lake, which was my family cabin before me. But before that cabin, my family had been going to Mormon Lake since the early 1970s. The reason I picked that Mormon Lake is not just because because I'm biased, but because there's so much to do at Mormon Lake. Now it's true, there are usually not a lot of properties for sale. In fact, the very most I've seen on the market at one time are about a dozen and a few of those being in escrow, so less than that availability. But there also are a wide range of prices. You have the smaller cabins and then you have the $2 million homes on 10 acres of property. Uh, but what there is to do in uh, Mormon Lake, so in the winter time, 
It's a big cross country skiing area and snowmobiling. I used to do that when I was a kid and I loved it. And in the summertime, there are a ton of other things to do. So the Mormon Lake Lodge rents, rents out cabins if you wanna go experience it for yourself. But there's also a big lodge and a steakhouse and a bar and a country store. And back in the day, the bar on Friday and Saturday nights used to have uh, live bands, usually cowboy type bands, but it would be fun to go out dancing with your friends. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, but then there are, if you're into cycling, there are motorcycling and um, bicycling. I used to ride my bike and um, it was great. Uh, there's hiking, there's the Arizona Trail. Now the motorcycling, they do have the True Broke for Sturgis event, motorcycle event every summer. Um, in the campground. Now this year it's canceled because of COVID, but it's a really fun and popular event. And there are a lot of horse events like roping events and riding events, rodeo type events in the summertime. And there are also places where you can go on a horse guided tour. So there'd be maybe a dozen horses um, people will rent or you know pay 150 say for an hour or two tour and they will take you on a tour through the words on the hunt horses is really really fun uh, you can also go fishing in the little lake um, like I said ATV riding and if you're into boating Lake Mary is 10 minutes away and if you go to Lake Mary you can put your boat on the water there is fishing really good fishing you can water ski and jet ski so Lake Mary very close very fun um, but so many things to do at Mormon Lake that that is why I picked it as my number one place in Northern Arizona to buy a cabin. 7,200 foot elevation means it's great temperature all summer and in the winter it's cold yeah but if you're into the winter sports or if you even want to go skiing at uh, Snow Bowl it's a little distance to drive but hey um, not bad. My brother used to do that all the time. So that is my list. I am Dawn Dickinson. I'm actually a cabin specialist. I work for Realty One Group Mountain Desert. If you're ever interested in cabins, you just shoot me a comment below or contact me with my contact information below. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please put a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. I am just new to video and I'm just learning. And if you uh, put a like or subscribe, more chance somebody else will find this video. Okay, I hope you have a great summer here in Northern Arizona. Um, take care and I post content every week. So I hope to catch you next week.